Jimmy is still on the team somehow. And I think we're sort of gearing up for him to get traded or cut. Uh, when he initially had the surgery, they said early July is when he's going to start throwing. And that's when things could happen to me. I mean, yeah, I guess that's important when he starts throwing, but the real big thing that everyone's waiting on is Deshaun Watson. Cause if the league suspends him for a year, I think there's a good chance that the, the Browns would trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. Cause they're a good team. And I think they could talk themselves into him being the best thing available for them. But if he doesn't get suspended for the whole year, I think the Niners are probably going to be in that position where they have to cut him or keep him. Um, so they're trying to make it seem like it's about his shoulder. I think it's probably about the legal situation. It's not even a legal situation. What the NFL does with the quarterback in Cleveland, that's what the hangup is right now for the Niners. They're going to suspend them. That's for, uh, don't you think? I think so. It's just like how long? Yeah. 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 And what's interesting about this is, so the NFL – didn't come down hard enough on Ray Rice, whatever, however long ago that was. And ever since then, they've been trying to overcompensate. Let's say they suspend Deshaun Watson a year to really show that they're tough on this stuff. Well, Robert Kraft was in a similar situation. They'd never punished him. Daniel Snyder's in a lot of trouble. They haven't done anything with Daniel Snyder. Stephen Ross has gotten in trouble with uh, the, the coachings, the, the coaches he's hired hasn't gotten it, hasn't been penalized by the league. There's a lot of owners like that. And I think what I've heard is that in the CBA, there's a clause that says that the owners are supposed to be held to a higher standard than the players. So Deshaun and his lawyer could say, wait a second, you came real, you came down real hard on, on Deshaun, who also sat out last year, but you've done nothing with these owners who are supposed to be held to a higher standard. One of them did something extremely similar to Deshaun, not as many times, but, it, but once. So I think that's maybe what the holdup is right now. The, the NFL is thinking, you know, how, we have a weird precedent here. How do we maneuver this? Let me ask you a question. The The owner you're talking about is Robert Kraft? Yes. Okay. Iggy, I don't keep up on all this this stuff. I'm a sport or a sports writer, not a morals writer. But Robert Kraft, as far as I understand it, paid for a service. Yeah. The other person willingly engaged in it. Right. There is a difference between what he – yeah, he didn't like – uh, intimidate anyone. That's right. Right. So, That's true. So and it was once. It was once. And it, although I guess where he did it, Florida, wherever prostitution is not legal, I understand that. Yes. Um, he didn't uh, force himself on someone. And my impression is women are accusing Watson of forcing himself on them. Correct. 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 I think that's a difference. That's a difference. That's a fair difference. I think it's not just craft to him it's also daniel snyder daniel snyder's in a lot of hot water on a lot of different uh employment malpractices and yeah. has been under investigation for a long time the nfl hasn't done anything so i think that's i mean I, it doesn't mean they won't suspend deshaun watson they will it's just taking a while because i think the nfl has to figure out how do we punish this guy but not yeah. punish these owners when we're supposed to hold them to a higher standard but we, they don't because they're billionaires and this guy's not i'd like to come back to jimmy Sure. Chris, Jimmy is what's germane for us yes. uh, as talking about the Niners. And what you're saying is Jimmy's fate depends on what the league does with Watson. I got it. Yep. But let's talk about Jimmy. Mm -hmm. If, in fact, Jimmy is beginning to throw again, I haven't seen any reports that he is. But l let's say he is. I want to say something real clear. I wish him all the best. Yeah. He was a good 49er. I don't mean he was a great quarterback. But he never bitched. Um, he was, you know, the people in New, New England said he essentially quit on him. Never quit. He didn't quit on the 49ers. He played last season. He played hurt. And, and he was honest about it, but he didn't complain about it. So I think he's been a good 49er. I hope he can throw as well as he, as he ever did. And I hope he gets employment at the Browns or somewhere. I just don't want him to have employment at the 49ers. And it's nothing personal, Iggy. I think keeping him on the team is dreadful. It's a bad message. Now is the time you move on. You move on to the new guy. You take your chances. You don't have this uh, Garoppolo either competing or as a backup. You, you move on or else, what does it mean about what you think about Trey Lance? So again, all the power to Jimmy, just not in Santa Clara. 
Yeah, and you know, sending him to Cleveland, like the Rams had Jared Goff. They didn't keep him around to back up Matthew Stafford just in case. They sent him to Detroit, which was cold-blooded. That's like sending him to – that's like the new age Buffalo. Buffalo's a good team. But sending Jimmy to Cleveland, Cleveland's a really good team. That Cleveland has a good defense. They have – their offensive line coach is Bill Callahan, who's a phenomenal offensive line coach. Yes, yep. They're, they have really good running backs. They have Amari Cooper, who isn't the best fit with Jimmy Garoppolo, but he's a really good player. I mean, it's the best place Jimmy Garoppolo could possibly end up, and it would be, I mean, be a nice thing of the Niners for the Niners to do for him. And I think the fans should applaud that if he gets yeah. it. Uh, again, yeah. there, I don't think there should be any bitterness fans toward Jimmy for him uh, for anything he did. He no. was a loyal and a good 49er, and he played his ass off. He did. He did. He, he did. did for them. So um, I just, boy, I just don't want him to be around here anymore. And I don't understand what, what took them so long. I saw uh, you did this video about they had the sixth ranked uh, roster in the league. Now, six is pretty good. but you In the a, NFC. In the NFC. I'm sorry, in the NFC. Yeah. But you made a good point. If they had gotten rid of Jimmy when they should have, they might have had the best roster. Yeah. Because they could have gotten free agents. I still think they're being a little too conservative, uh, too, a little too conservative, thinking, well, it's Trey Lance's first year. We can't go all in. He's a first year starter. Colin Kaepernick went to the Super Bowl in his first year as a starter. I mean, it's happened. This is a really good team. Theoretically, you're, the reason you're moving on to him is because he's supposed to be an upgrade over your previous starter who just went to the NFC Championship game. So, what are you scared of? What, good, make a commitment. They didn't do it. I think they're kind of doing a wait and see thing. I mean, and maybe next year they'll they'll I, I'm guessing I'm guessing Iggy, isn't this the kind of thing where you wish that you really had you or I or anyone had a relationship with Lynch or Shanahan the, the way maybe I had with Bill Walsh or with yeah. Seaford and you could sit and say would you tell me what's going on yes. we could be off the record I won't quote you but I want to know what the reality is here. But I don't think anybody knows the reality. Now, good for them. They keep their mouths shut. But um, I have no idea what their thinking is. I don't. I, don't even, I can only I mean, read the tea leaves. Lynch has said certain things. He said, we always, we've always we done a lot of spending the last few years. We always planned on dialed back spending this year. I, I don't know what that comes from, but it makes me feel like in terms of cash spending, the Niners decided they were going to spend, you know, maybe that was earmarked for Debo this year. And they only had so much cash to go around, only so much signing bonus money to go around. That's going to go to Debo this year and not a bunch of new free agents. I don't know. It just seems very strange because that's not exactly how Eddie D did things back in the day. And that's not how the, the Rams are operating right now. But Iggy, if they had gotten rid of Garoppolo, they would have had money. Yes. So they're arguing yes. against themselves. Yes. And so why do they not get rid of Garoppolo? Is it because they felt that Garoppolo tried to hijack the process by having surgery so late, and instead of releasing him and sort of giving Garoppolo what he want, what he wanted, they uh, dug in into a sort of petty battle? I don't think so. I you think, don't think so? I think they thought they could get better offers for Jimmy, and when they didn't materialize, they were caught with their pants down. How detached from reality are they in that respect? Well, if, I mean, again, I don't know what they're thinking, but if that's what they're thinking, they are indeed detached from reality. I, I, Jimmy Garoppolo's trade value is so low because of them. They've made their discontent really evident. They traded so much for Trey Lance. Then they turn around and say, like, oh, we really like Jimmy Garoppolo. We'd like a second round. No, you don't. We know you don't like him. That's right. Right. They're to that's called talking out of both sides of your mouth. They do it a lot, and they think they're slick. I don't think they're that slick. But I commend the effort. It's a good college try. Iggy, let me ask you a question. Yeah. As a quarterback on the 49ers, I'm going to uh, give you an assignment now. Give Jimmy a letter grade for, for his his um, tenure on the 49ers. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. To me, he is a C-plus quarterback. But his tenure on the 49ers was definitely no worse than a B maybe even a B plus because he won a lot. He went to two NFC championship games. He's not a B quarterback, but he at least had a B tenure. I mean, he had a lot. He won a lot. Give him credit. And he took him to a Super Bowl. Took. Yeah, he was there. He was okay. on the team. That was the wrong verb. Yeah, he took. Was there. Maybe they yeah. took him 
to it. Yeah. But anyway, you know, your grades, I totally agree with you. C it's kind of weird. I mean, he's not a B, he's, he's not a B plus tenure. quarterback, but he definitely had a B plus tenure here with the 49ers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to see what, what's going to happen to him next. What do you think's in store for Jimmy Garoppolo's future? Okay. Either he goes to Cleveland or he signs as a backup somewhere. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. And do you think he's going to reemerge and have a second act to his career and be continue to win and sort of put it in the 49ers face? Or do you think the Niners are going to end up being right about him and he's going to be away from Kyle and Debo and, and Kittle and he's going to stop winning? Um, I think wherever he ends up, he'll be a winning quarterback. I do. I don't think he'll be a great quarterback, but, you know, I think he'll be a winning quarterback. What do you I'd think? I'd love to see it. I think it's possible. I also think what's going to happen is the injuries are going to start becoming more frequent. With Good him. point. And he just won't be on the field as much. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. He toughed it out last year for sure. All right. Let me ask Listen. you a question. Yeah. Do you admire how he handled himself on the Niners? Yeah, that's a good question. I do admire how he handled himself on the 49ers because – like, what was his biggest sin? Not being a great quarterback? Okay, he's not a great quarterback. And that's his fault, I guess. Uh, but he was relentlessly blamed by the coach, right? I mean, it was implied after games, after losses. Kyle never blamed himself, but he was very candid in his praise and critiques of the quarterback. Jimmy always took it. And I think a lot of players in the team look at it as like, wow, highest paid quarter, highest paid player in the team, winning quarterback, the coach really throws him under the bus and he just takes it like, wow, that's impressive. So I, I have to say that. I admired yeah, how he comported I admired himself. It. Again, yeah. I, I never met these people. I never covered them. And I would like to have met them and covered them because I could get a feel. It's different at a press conference as opposed to talking to people. Not that you really could during the pandemic. And um, you and I are pretty quick takes on people. Yes. I would like to have known him a little bit, but I think it only would have reinforced my admiration for him. One thing that annoyed me a little bit, and I don't think it's a character flaw, but I would notice is after losses, like in the group press conference, uh, particularly when he played poorly, when he was the reason they lost with the interception that broke, you know, broke their back, he'd come out and say like, you know, Ask specifically about those interceptions. You know, we did this or we didn't do this good enough or we should have done that. Or, And I'd like I would have liked him in those moments to say, oh, that was that was my mistake. And he would never say that was my mistake. But I think it's something he got from New England, because when things went well, he never, ever took credit for anything. I think what he learned from Bill Belichick is it's a team sport. There's no point in talking about yourself, good or bad. You accomplish things together. You fail together. So when people ask you about yourself, say we. Always say we. And I think that's kind of what he was doing. But sometimes it was like, man, you need to stop saying we. Stop using the royal we. Stop speaking French. Talk about yourself for once. And he wouldn't do it. That's the one thing that would kind of annoy me about him. But I think he was just trying to be a good teammate. I, I, I agree. I would put a, a, a good interpretation on that. The other thing is he may not be a deep guy. Fair. He may not. Um, you know, I've met players yeah. who are very deep. Yes. Very deep Steve. people. Deep when you talk to Joe. Deep? No, I no. don't think Joe is deep. No, um, Joe, if you're watching, sorry, I think you're very intelligent. Yeah, I never with Joe ever had a conversation that went below the surface. Now, it could have been that he didn't like me, and it could be that he's Aristotle with everybody else. Steve Young is deep, right? I mean, Steve Young is the ocean, that's how deep he is. Yes. Yes, of course. Agree? Yes, absolutely. Yes. So I do admire Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm very curious to see what he does next in his career. And if he continues to uh, win and play, I will admire him even more. And remember, we have a bet on him. I, I want to clarify our bets because we have two going. Bottles of wine involved. One with Jimmy. Uh, I said he would not be on the roster for the first regular season game. And you said he would. I did. So that's a I bottle did. of wine. And the yeah. other is Debo. I say he signs an extension before the opening of training camp, and you say no. Yes. And the, okay, I forgot what the bottles of wine are, but it doesn't matter. Good so ones. Those are, those are our two bets. Yeah. And look, if if Cleveland suspends Deshaun Watson for the full year, I'm screwed on this Jimmy Garoppolo bet. But if they 
if it's only ha- partial year, I feel like there's not going to be a trade. And then the Niners have to make a really tough decision and we'll see if they can do it. If, Aiden, if, if they suspend um, Watson for the whole year, is it over with Baker Mayfield? Baker Mayfield has said he doesn't want to play there anymore. Uh, I, I don't know if they can force yeah. him to, um, but I, I think maybe they prefer to have a quarterback who wants to be there than one who doesn't. Plus, I don't think they like Baker Mayfield that much. I mean, I don't think I think the owner said something about wanting a grown up at quarterback. I think really? that's I think that's why Baker Mayfield said he wants to leave. It's not it's not a good relationship. It's not like the Niners and Jimmy. It's not cordial or professional. Ooh, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. So maybe they didn't like his stupid commercials. They're stupid. That being said, Baker Mayfield got pulverized last year and played through a lot of injuries. And if they replace him with Jimmy Garoppolo, I know he did it last year. But there were times when he was with the Niners where I, people wondered, like, can you really not play or you can't play your best? And that's what, the, you know, Martellus Bennett and Julian Edelman said about him, too. So there's a lot of pressure in Cleveland to play, even if your arm's falling off. They have they don't care at all. So, Jimmy, good luck with that. That's a very irrational fan base over there. Sorry. Just want to say that. I was interviewing a guy, the the SI, the fan nation writer for Cleveland. He brought up that point. He was like. But one of the reasons they're running Baker out of town is they didn't think he was tough enough. Jimmy, boy, that's that's a tough act to follow. Anyway. Interesting.